Hey everyone, welcome to this week's episode of the Lead Her podcast. Today, I want to share something with you that is going to help give you a lot more clarity on your goals this year and help you just stay on the right path. Because sometimes when we're working on new goals and we're maybe not seeing results right away, it's really easy to get distracted and start doing different things that don't align with the person you want to be, the person that you want to become. And this was also something that we shared at the live event a couple of weeks ago as well, um, because for us to get that vision of the year, we had to become a lot more aware of what our values were. Now, stay with me. I know you'd be like, oh, values, here we go. But honestly, I was exactly the same. Like whenever I've done like goal setting workshops or um, like anything online, like with work that just helps you go, right, okay, your values are really important. And it used to just go over my head. But definitely coming into my 30s, like we always talk about like that Saturn returns, you get a lot more clarity in your 30s, you know who you are, who you want to be, where you want to go, who you want to spend time with, who you don't want to spend your time with. Like we definitely get a lot more alignment with our values and um, we're not experimenting as much, which is really cool. But it can be really easy, like I said, to still get distracted and start doing things that aren't aligned with the person you want to be. So values can be really, really powerful. And they do change over time. And I also want to say as well, there's no right or wrong with values. Like there's nothing wrong with your value. Um, if it's not health, if it's not um, family, like your values are important to you. And that is the way that you live your life. So once you understand yourself more than you ever have before, it honestly just gives you so much more clarity and just makes your life easier and makes it so much easier to make decisions. So I want to share some of mine and um, towards the end of this podcast, I'll help you discover yours, just knowing that it's going to really, really help you this year and beyond to know yourself more than you ever have before. Like for me, like um, so many people say to me, they're like, yeah, and like, um, how are you so motivated all the time with your workouts? Like, how do you get up and work out every day? Or how do you eat so well all the time? And I'll be totally honest, one of my biggest values is health. And this can, and, and the same with you guys, like your values might stem from stuff that's happened to you when you're younger or stuff that you just believe in or stuff that you're really passionate about. So you follow that path, but you don't realize what the values are. And mine really stems back to September 11th um, when, uh, that all happened to the Twin Towers at the exact same time my dad had a heart attack and I think I was only like 12 13 at that time and um, but I was in high school my high school was not a nice place to be it was a very scary place you just did not want to stand out you did not want to be seen that it was horrible and they had like this tannoid and um you, they, they would call probably all the bad kids over the tannoy to go to like um, the headmaster's office. So the tannoy comes on and it's already a really weird day because we kind of knew something had happened. I just remember there's a weird feeling in the class and it was very quiet and everybody was a bit wary. Um, and I got called over the tannoy to go to the headmaster's office and everybody turned around and looked at me because it was like, well, why would she be getting called to the headmaster's office? Um, and it was just mortifying and I was like what the hell like this is so weird like what is going on so and it doesn't just get called to like your class it gets called out through the whole school so I was like that is weird so I got up and I went to the headmaster's office and then my auntie was there and my brother my brother was in the same school as well and we were like what's going on Um, and they were like we need to go down south as quick as we can your dad's had a heart attack he's really not well Um, like this might be the last time we see him basically um, he had a really bad heart attack. He actually died for a few seconds and he had to get shot back to life. Um, we were told he might not live for long. He's still here to this day, which is incredible. So there is a happy story to this. But I think like his heart attack, um, he was like 36. I am 35 in two weeks. And for me, like growing up when I was going through a bit of a wild phase and I did have a bad lifestyle and his heart attack was caused from 20 fags a day, like, Indians every night for dinner a lot of alcohol a lot of partying like my dad lived his life and he still does to this day as well just no fags but everything else is still going on um and like I think like when I was going through that wild phase a part of it just didn't feel right to me it just felt like I was doing something wrong I just didn't like the direction of my life and we talk about this all the time when you just kind of get a a moment of like crossroads when you're like right I'm, I, I could go down that route or I could change and I went for that change, even though I didn't know where I was going, I just decided enough was enough and I didn't want to keep living that way. And I think it genuinely all stems from that thought of health and seeing someone almost die from like a terrible, terrible lifestyle. I was like, 
I don't want to be like this. I want to feel fresh. I want to feel healthy. I want to feel strong. I want to feel good. I want to live my life to my fullest. I want to be in my 30s and be the fittest I've ever been. I want to never sit on the sidelines and watch everybody else have fun and, and I sit behind the scenes. So my huge biggest value is health. Um, and I just find it so important. And, and it's one of those ones that like, yeah, if I've got a lot of work on, I'm still going to get up and I'm going to look after my body because I know I need to look after my body to help it go through all this craziness that I put it through. Like our bodies are amazing. They do so much for us and they take so much, they deserve so much love and so much care. But I don't want to put this on you and be like, your value should be health for you to get fitter and for you to get healthier and for you to get stronger. Absolutely not. Um, and I don't want you to feel bad if your value is not health in any way. I've got some lead her members that don't give a hoot about their health, but they do it anyway for other aspects, for their other values. Um, but that's what's like, it doesn't get me up every morning to be like, right, I need to do a workout because my dad had a heart attack and blah, blah, blah. It's just like I follow that healthy path because I've got that scar in my brain of that bad shit that happened. And I'm like, I don't want that to happen to me. And I want to be the complete opposite of that. And, and, and that's what drives me. And that, but I also need to add to that as well. Although that's my value and, and you follow your life through your values and you act that way, you behave that way. Another part of that is that I need to add is just that I've been doing this for like 11, 12 years. I've been going to fitness classes, then I was running, then I learned how to lift weights. And then that was me for like 10 years of lifting weights and looking after myself and um, probably longer because I've been with Joe like 10 years now, which is crazy. So it's probably been about 12 years because I started just before I met Joe. Um, that's been a long ass time of not being perfect, but just consistency. Like at the beginning, I didn't have the answers. I didn't know what I was doing, but I just started there and it just kept building and growing and I just kept following that path and that journey so that also makes it easier for me to get up and just do things and just be in automatic pilot mode and just get it done and um, that's that stems what I do as well but a lot of that does come from my values and from my belief and and some people might think it's really selfish but I will always put my health first like like Joe for example he can sit and work 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 and not eat for me I'm like no I'm hungry I know myself if I don't eat then my work is then going to suffer and I'm not going to be able to focus and then I'm going to be like all frustrated. I know what I'm like. So it can just help me make better decisions really kind of quicker and it can just make me make time for me first and then it's like everything else follows suit so after. Um, that's just the way. And some people will be like, oh, that's so wrong. And, and I don't get, don't get me wrong. Some of you will be listening to this podcast thinking she's mental. But that is just what my passion is and I'm going to share later for you to, to discover yours as well. Um, but yeah, it just helps me make so much better decisions when times are tough and times are challenging that I can just hone in and be like, right, I just need to get this done. But another aspect of this as well is like, because I know my value, one of my values is health. Like you might have a number of them, okay? There'll be like three or four values that you have and they change day to day. Um, but there is some that are really, really, really obvious. Like once you really like understand them. But for me, like another value of mine is um like personal growth or you can maybe kind of call it like career or just business like I love that I find it so enjoyable it's like my passion it's like I live and breathe it and again some of you might be like what this lady's crazy but I just love like business and growth um but for me like if you were to like if I was to like get maybe a bit bored or fed up like I mentioned earlier and you feel like business takes time to grow or just the hobbies or things that you're doing take time that you start looking at new things to do to make you feel good in the meantime but it takes you away from your goal and it takes you away from your path and your journey so like for me sometimes like I have looked at things like crossfit or olympic lifting and I've thought oh my god that looks so badass that looks so amazing I want to do that so then you get distracted from like the stuff that's already working for you and doing right for you to try new stuff. Then you're trying that new stuff whilst you're still trying to like achieve other goals. You're getting frustrated, you're getting overwhelmed, you're not accomplishing anything, you feel like a failure, you give up or you start buying like knitting craft and you're like, I want to learn how to knit, but then I'm sat in my butt knitting all the time. And yeah, it's cool to make things, but actually I don't value sitting on my bum. I want to get up and get moving. So like when you know like, it, it's a lovely idea to learn how to knit. It's a lovely idea to learn how to do CrossFit and to do Olympic lifting. But it takes 
a lot of time. And that's something that I'm just not willing to give is some of my time to, to spend on more training or sitting on my bum. So sometimes like it can be really good to be like, actually, that's not alignment with where I want to be. I love the idea of it. I would love to be able to snatch and clean and jerk and all that stuff. I would love to. It looks amazing. It looks badass. But actually, when I see the way they need to live, the way they need to train, the time it takes, it's actually not for me. So sometimes it can be really good rather than just thinking, oh, that looks like a really good goal. Let's get it started. It's like, do I actually want to walk in their shoes? Do I actually want to live my life that way? Am I willing to put in that much pressure, that much stress, that much focus to the goal? No, well, it's not for me. And it's not to say it's not for me forever, but it's not for me right now with this chapter of my life when I am trying to grow my business and I'm trying to spend more time doing different things that that's just going to take me away from that right now. And I don't want to put that um, into my life right now it's just too much and and it just means that I can't give energy to the things that I do want to give so sometimes we love the idea of like different goals and we love the idea of different projects or learning new things a new certificate another qualification but it's just directing us and giving us that quick high for a couple of weeks and then it just becomes more stressful so always ask yourself am I actually willing to walk in their shoes nah that is so empowering. And that doesn't mean you're not good enough. That doesn't mean you're not, a, that doesn't mean you're a failure in any way. It just means you know you. And that is honestly so, so powerful for me to just be like, I know myself. So if someone asks me if I want to go to a rave or a club, I can just be like, nah. But if I was in my 20s, I'd be like, yeah, I don't want to miss out. Like, let's go. This would be amazing. This would be so cool. Ditch uni, ditch this, ditch that, and just go. And then I'll feel crap for weeks and miserable for weeks after it. Now I can go, okay. I know it'd be really good to go, it'd be really cool, I love the idea of it, but actually it's just not my scene, it's not my thing, it's not going to help me with my goals right now, it's going to make me feel crap for days on end afterwards, nah, and even though you might be like, oh, but people might like not be my friends anymore, or people might think I'm boring, or people might um, not like me for saying no, but when you know yourself, you don't care, you don't care what anyone else wants you to do. I don't want to stay up till 3 a.m. That's not in alignment with my values is staying up and feeling crap. I want to feel energized. I want to feel good. I want to feel healthy. So it means you can start saying no to things you don't want to do either and not feel the pressure by others to do it because you just know you and your values and where you want to be. But also, like I said earlier, like it might be not be for you right now. So what I, um, else I was speaking to our, our ladies that came along to a live event was like, we're all in different chapters of life right now. I heard this in a podcast and I thought it was awesome and I, I wanted to share it with you guys. It's like, you have like different chapters of your, or actually on the podcast it was saying, you have your, think of your life in decades, not years, because a year goes by really quickly. Sometimes you feel like you achieve a lot. Sometimes you feel like you've achieved little, but if you look at over 10 years, you've done so many things. You've maybe created little mini versions of you. You've maybe completely changed career. You've maybe like learned like a language in 10 years. Like so much can happen in 10 years. And I think like our teens are like our growth and development stage. Our twenties are like finding ourselves and our passions. Our thirties are like, maybe for some of you, it might be motherhood. So for some of you, it might be like so career focused and building your career. You're your 40s or maybe motherhood or maybe finding yourself after motherhood your 50s your 60s whatever and it came from like um steve martin i think it's steve martin i'm not sure but the guy that's like an actor he's got gray hair he's in lots of like old school family movies i feel it's steve martin and it came from him he said i think of my life in decades he spent a, a decade learning how to be a comedian and stand up a decade of being an actor, a decade of learning how to play an instrument, a decade of being an artist, like how cool is that? But I feel like a decade is so hard, like, because I feel like at 35 to 45 might be completely different from 30 to, to 40, you know, but I like to say for you guys, like maybe just thinking what chapter you're in, and that's what we called the event was like, what's your best chapter, like you just want to live your, the chapter you're in right now, you just want to make it the best for where you're at with your life right now, so you might be a new mum, and you might be like, right, um, oh, I want to get back doing CrossFit, or I want to get back doing that thing, or I want to be doing my career. But actually, maybe with the way your life is right now, with this new baby and like the time together and the, the discovering each other, learning who you are again, that takes time. But sometimes it's just like take the pressure off a little bit and just know yourself and know where you're at right now. I know if I become a mum, like maybe in the future, I know I'm going to have to give myself like 
a good year or two or maybe even three just to find myself again my hormones are going to be all over the place my time is going to be completely different my priorities and my values might be completely different that it's almost like too much for me to say right okay I'm going to learn this new skill I'm going to start this new job I'm going to get myself back into like the leanest fittest version of me but because that's a big value of health I do think I will do that because it's so instilled in me from the very beginning but if I was to start again from like nothing from ground zero it may be too overwhelming so sometimes like with some of our lead car members we say like right you love the idea of like ticking off a load of monroes but with the way your life looks right now maybe that's not for like this year maybe maybe that's a future goal and that's something that we can just bank it we can just save it go i'd love to do that one day but it's not right now just at this chapter of my life i'm doing enough and i want to tick off this big goal and this big focus until i get there but what I shared with ladies at the event, and this is not me pushing my values onto you, but it kind of is, but it's because I know it's important and I've worked with women since like 2015, like this is so important, is that even if your value is family, even if your value is travel, adventure, even if your value is business, you're not going to be in a good place with all of those things unless you look after yourself. So that can sometimes like really help you like when you are maybe trying to like your value is family it's like well there's no family without you you have to be the best version of you and look after yourself so that you can then look after others like we say it all the time you like put your own like mask on first because if we're trying to give everything to everybody else and we've got nothing left to give we're going to hit burnout and we're going to feel terrible we're going to feel rubbish we're going to be snapping at our kids we're going to be snapping at our partner we're going to be like getting ill on adventures or we're going to be struggling within our career if there's no you so although your value might not be health hopefully this just plants a seed that even if it's not health you're still important and your body is a whole part of each of your values so we need to look after you in the minimum way that we possibly can and that's what we do with some of the lead car members like if their value is their family it's like okay well we want you to be able to be fit and healthy enough to run around with your boys when you're older <laughs> yeah and they're like absolutely well that's that's a reason why that's why we do it it's for that value it's not that your health is your value you know and then it's just making that become a consistent feature within your kind of lifestyle so that's really helpful to know as well and I just really wanted to share that because I always know when women are thriving with all their values with their career with their family with their personal life it's when they're feeling the best within themselves so when it does feel a wee bit haywire it's just like right where is my exercise where is my steps where is my food am I looking after myself so then I can thrive in these other areas of life always bring it back to you because if you're right everything else will benefit last thing is that sometimes like your values will be conflicted like i said sometimes in your 20s you feel very conflicted because you are discovering who you are and you are discovering what's important to you and when you're doing things you don't want to do for other people you feel uncomfortable and you're not happy and that's when you know you're not in alignment of your values so to find your values i know it's really fluffy i know it's really boring but hopefully from hearing this today you're like okay i'm actually following my life and my values so it would be actually quite helpful to know them to know myself to help me not get distracted and stay on the straight and narrow for what is important to me and what are the things that i value and i really want to improve this year and beyond but your values can conflict and that's why we need to kind of know them so if you jump onto google you can get a full list of them and and it might take you a wee while but once you start kind of focusing on them and highlighting them and uh, saving them you start being like okay i know myself right now and you can just it's honestly it's so freeing because i know like when we first started this podcast i talked to you guys about me being a wee bit low in confidence and um not feeling like i was doing a good job and, and feeling really lost within myself i was like buying a ukulele to like be like right okay i'm going to learn an instrument because that will make me feel good and that will escape the problem that i had is that i just wasn't living within my values there was a part of it that was off within me that i had to fix and it's just so freeing when you're like nah I'm, i love the idea of it but i'm not willing to walk in their shoes go them they're amazing and I'm, that's not for me right now but it might be something like knitting might be something i do again in my 60s and i'll come back to it but at least i dabbled in it a little bit but it's not for me right now and i can just not feel guilty for saying no to the things right now so three ways for you to find your values and i shared this at the event a couple of weeks ago as well is number one is look at your calendar your diary what are you putting in first are you just putting in work 
okay well work is a, a high value of yours and again like like we we're saying with your values if they conflict it's like a lot of people that are new mums and they maybe have like work is really picking up and they're spending less time with their family they can feel really uncomfortable and really stressed and really overwhelmed and that's because like work is important to earn the money to look after their family but it's taking them away from their highest value which is family and it's just important to know that if that happens that you only let it happen for a short period of time and you don't like let it last forever because that's where deep unhappiness comes from is when we're just so focused on something that's taken us away from the thing that we really really kind of value so always try and be like okay this is temporary it's going to be uncomfortable but i know it's because of this but when this is done i'm going to really lean into this and spend more time with my family whenever and and just center myself and refill my cup and give myself more energy again so that's when you can feel drained when you're just like maybe taking yourself away from your highest value and um, to focus on things that you value less but look at your calendar what goes in first, what's going in second, what's going in third. They're probably most likely your things that you value the most. Um, so go in through your diary and maybe you'll start noticing there's things that you're putting in that you actually don't value more, that you're like, okay, how can I put more things that I do value in there? So that can be really handy just for you to really see where you're spending your time the most. And is that actually something that's making you happy or not? The second thing is look at your bank account. What are you spending your money on? Are you spending your money on, like I said, like crafts and crap and hobbies and things that you actually aren't really that bothered about and you're just doing it for a quick high? Are you just buying crappy clothes on ASOS to make you feel a wee bit better? Are you buying loads of skincare to make your skin feel better when actually maybe there's other more important things you can be doing to make your skin feel better? Like maybe you just love that high of getting something coming to, to the, the house and you're just spending your money and your time on junk. Um, so look at your bank balance like what are you spending most of your money on that's maybe something that you really value or it's maybe something that you're looking for distraction the last one my favorite one if lola or my dog lola or if an alien came to follow you for a week what would they think is just really important to you what would they think you're living your life by what would they see as your value what would they see you do when no one else is watching like if they had no context of what family was or what money was or what career was what would they think was really important to you by following you around because if you look at like again the diary and the, the bank balance and then what you're doing day to day you actually start realizing am i actually doing the things that i value and the things that are important to me or am i staying up late feeling crap the next day having no energy being cranky with everybody when actually I want to be a complete opposite version of that and that's more important to me that we can start stripping it back and getting you back into that positive place that is actually helping you become the woman that you want to be. I hope you've enjoyed that today. I'd love to hear if you've took anything from this that has helped you or sparked a thought with you um, or even just gave you more clarity because honestly or even actually if you need more help with it because I know it is hard to do but I just know how freeing it can be and so empowering it can be and it can just really really help you focus on where you want to go and who you want to become thank you so much for listening as always I hope you have an incredible week and I'll speak to you all very soon